Good morning. Start of day two, and we're going to be heading almost directly west. And this is where we begin to hug not just the west coast of Scotland, but also head over to the point where we're going to begin some island traversing, which I think may begin tomorrow, the likes of the Isle of Skye, which I've wanted to do all my life. So it's 172 miles, and by the end of the day, we will be on mainland Scotland, but pretty much overlooking the Isle of Mull. I think it'll be something like six hours riding or so, but you may be able to tell the weather is nowhere near as clear as yesterday. There's rain in the air and it's been spitting with rain pretty much since we woke up. It was light at 4.15 in the morning and I was sleeping on my back just looking up from about 4.15 at bright sunshine piercing through the tent. So I didn't have the best night's sleep but it was a brilliant experience being out in the middle of the countryside like this. I can see everyone just packing up now, clearing up the breakfast, getting their bikes set up, but definitely can feel in the air like there's a chance there could be a big storm coming. There once was a ship that put to sea and the name of that ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew harder, bowed it down, blow me bully boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tanning is done, she had not been two weeks from shore and down on her right whale board. The captain called all hands and swore and take that whale in tow. Soon may the whale come to bring us to guarantee and come. One day when the tempest is done, take our feet and go. Da 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 Okay, we've just had a late lunch and the reason it's been a late lunch is because unfortunately an American gentleman who's in our group he crashed the interceptor I think he went head over heels over the handlebars and semi impaled himself on the mirror he managed to get up afterwards but he has been taken to hospital so I hope for one everything's okay and secondly he'll be able to join us later today or tomorrow if he's physically and psychologically okay so i'm going to run back in now catch back up with the group because i think we may have a bit of time to make up but it's been spectacular scenery despite the weather that's been very hit and miss today it just adds to the mystique and we're going past lock after lock just winding around it's been oh it's been glorious so about to hit the road again and hopefully there may be an american biker who come to rejoin us 
in a few hours. Welcome to day three. You can see everyone behind me there waiting now because we're about to jump onto the second ferry of the day. Today's the day that we get to the Isle of Skye, which is the real key point that I've been waiting for. I think this will be one of the beauty spots in the whole of the UK. The weather yesterday was complete torrential rain almost for the whole day managed to get to the hotel in the evening which luckily enough was above a pub so we dried out our gear as best as possible although the reality is that i put on my jacket and my boots and they were still soaking wet but it was lovely to get down to a pub in the evening the scots are just a fascinating bunch to talk to very very straight talking really really dry sense of humor the first ferry that I got on today, about an hour and a half ago, I board onto the ferry and there's a gentleman standing there and he looks at me and he says, get an effing move on, there's a ferry to catch. And I look at him, waiting for him to smile and give me a nod. Nothing at all. The straightest face you've ever seen in your life. We've also had to adopt some Americanisms because we've got four Americans in the group. So. When you head off, it's KSU. So this morning, KSU at 9 a.m. That's kickstands up at 9 a.m. That means no messing about, no excuses. Everyone must be ready at the time. There's no time to fuel up, to put your gloves on, to put your helmet on. You gotta be ready to go at that exact point.
made it to our destination for the night in Skye. It's, it's like the Garden of Eden, the west of Scotland and Skye. Untouched, unspoilt, luscious greenery just everywhere. It's like the whole of western Scotland and Skye is a national park where no one can build on. It is really breathtakingly beautiful. I did have a look because there are so few people here I thought the population must be microscopically small, and it is. The population here on the Isle of Skye used to be 20,000 people. It's now 13,000, not far off, halved in size. We're staying in this little hut. I think we've got about six of them in total for the whole group. So I'll give you a quick tour and then 40 minutes time dinner in this building, currently being cooked as I speak. This is our accommodation for the evening. Apologies for the mess. These are clothes out at the moment that have been shoved in my bag, soaking wet. But I think this will be the best place to dry them, facing the sun. I've never been in one of these before. Semicircular little huts, tiny in dimensions, but beautifully done inside. It's like something from Lord of the Rings. Beautiful wood ceiling. I'm guessing I'll be sleeping on the sofa and then there's another bed there squeezed into the corner. Little bathroom area, which is great so we don't have to go all the way down the stairs. If we get a call of nature at the, or in the middle of the night, tiny little kitchenette area that we won't need and little table and chairs with this view. Just glorious. Well, I'm going to go and get ready for dinner, so I'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on, and I will see you all in the next one.